G. The theory of gradual incarnation. Dorna was one of the first and the greatest of the opponents of the kenosis doctrine. He set himself the task of suggesting another theory which, while escaping the errors of kenoticism, would do full justice to the humanity of Christ. He proposed to solve the problem by the theory of a gradual or progressive incarnation. According to him the incarnation was not an act consummated at the moment of the conception of Jesus, but a gradual process by which the Logos joined himself in an ever-increasing measure to the unique and representative man, virtually a new creation, Christ Jesus, until the full union was finally consummated at the time of the resurrection. The union resulted in the Godman with a single consciousness and a single will. In this Godman the Logos does not supply the personality, but gives it its divine quality. This theory finds no support in scripture, which always represents the incarnation as a momentary fact. Rather than as a process. It logically leads to Nestorianism or the doctrine of two persons in the mediator. And since it finds the real seat of the personality in the man Jesus, it is utterly subversive of the real pre-existence of our Lord. Roth and Bovon are two of the most important supporters of this doctrine. The crucial difference between the ancient and the really modern theories respecting the person of Christ, lies in the fact that the latter, as appears also from the theory of Dorna, distinguish the person of the Logos, conceived as a special mode of the personal life of God, from the personality of Christ as a concrete human person uniquely divine in quality. According to modern views it is not the Logos, but the man Jesus that constitutes the ego in Christ. The personality of Jesus is human in type of consciousness and also in moral growth, but at the same time uniquely receptive for the divine, and thus really the climax of an incarnation of which humanity itself is the general cosmic expression. This is true also of the theory suggested by Sondri in his Christologies Ancient and Modern, a theory which seeks to give a psychological explanation of the person of Jesus, which will do justice to both the human and the divine in Jesus. He stresses the fact that the subliminal consciousness is the proper seat of all divine indwelling, or divine action upon the human soul, and holds that the same or a corresponding subliminal self is also the proper seat or locus of the deity of the incarnate Christ. The ordinary consciousness of Jesus was the human consciousness, but there appeared in him occasionally an uproot of the divine consciousness from the subliminal self. This theory has rightly been criticized severely. It ascribes a significance to the subliminal in the life of man which it does not possess, wrongly supposes that the deity can be located in some particular place in the person of Christ, and suggests a picture of Christ, as being only intermittently conscious of his deity, which is not in harmony with the data of scripture. It reveals once more the folly of trying to give a psychological explanation of the person of Christ. Besides Sondri some of the more influential representatives of modern Christology are Coons, Shader, Keeler, Mobley, and Dubose. Questions for further study. What change did the 18th century effect in Christology? What causes contributed to the present widespread denial of the deity of Christ? How do negative critics deal with the scriptural proofs for the deity of Christ? Did the liberal Jesus school succeed in presenting a tolerable picture of Jesus, which really squares with the facts? What is the distinction between the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith, and what purpose did it serve? What about the argument ought deus auto homo non bonus? How is the reality of Christ's manhood sometimes endangered? Was there a single or a double self consciousness in Christ? One or two wills? On what grounds is the messianic consciousness of Jesus denied? How can it be defended? Did Jesus regard the messiahship merely as a dignity that would be his in the future? Has the eschatological school any advantages over the liberal school? How do the Reformed, the Lutheran, and the Roman Catholic conceptions of the union of the two natures in Christ differ? What does the Formula Concordiae teach on this point? What was the Jesson Tubingen controversy? How did Kant, Hegel, and Schleiermacher conceive of this? Union? In what respect do the kenosis theories reveal the influence of Hegel? How did the modern conception of the immanence of God affect more recent Christologies? Is Sondra's psychological theory an acceptable construction? Literature, Bavink, Jereff. Dogm, 3, 
pp 264 to 349 Kuiper, dict dogm de cristo i pp 62 2 page 58 vos the self disclosure of jesus pp 35 to 103 temple the boyhood consciousness of christ or the christian view of god and the world pp 248 to 257 h r macintosh the doct of the person of jesus christ pp 141 to 284 lidon the divinity of our lord relton a study in christology pp 3 to 222 warfield christology and criticism lectures 6 to 8 rostron the christology of saint paul pp 196 229, Schweitzer, The Quest of the Historical Jesus, La Tuche, The Person of Christ in Modern Thought, Gore, The Reconstruction of Belief, pp 297, 526, Honig, De Persoon van den Middelaar in de Nieuwe Duitsch Dogmatiek, Sheldon, Hist of C.H.R. Doct. 2, 134-137, 348-353, Krauth, Conservative Reformation and Its Theology, pp 456 to 517 bruce the humiliation of christ lectures 3 4 and v loofs what is the truth about jesus christ chapter 6 sondry christologies ancient and modern chaps 3 4 7 cook the incarnation and recent criticism chapter 10 bruner the mediator especially chapter 12